question is, when counseling a couple and a wife is complaining that the husband now gives less money, in the past the husband earns more money and now he earns less money. So how can we counsel? Now I, what I want to say is, <coughs> problem in marriage is never the problem of one person. It's always two persons problem. So now it, from the man's perspective, he just wants you to quiet the wife so that the wife will not be nagging. That is like one side just saying she has problem. I want to make her quiet. Uh, this mentality uh, actually, um, now, usually people who seek counseling, they always come with that mentality. For instance, most of the time it's women who come. They will say, my husband doesn't lis listen to me, doesn't care about me, and, and different things. Now that is true. But at the same time, sometimes I ask a woman, um, how's your relationship? When you talk with him, how's your tone of voice? Uh, did he say something about like how you talk to him? And then the wife, sometimes they will admit, yes, I neck him too much, I, uh, I'm too negative, I'm too emotional. And so I will listen to both sides. It's very important in counseling that we listen to both sides. That we listen to the husband and the wife, and we never condemn any person. When we see a problem, instead of condemning, I will ask, okay, so this is a problem. Can we change it? But before we go to the changing part, we always come back to the point of the marriage. Do you have, um, uh, do you appreciate your wife or husband? Is there anything you appreciate? Because in order to change the wife, it's not telling the wife, okay, don't just look for more money. If it's just looking for more money, then uh, you know it's, it's saying all the problem is the wife's. When we counsel, we realize that it's always uh, the problem of both persons. And the most important thing is to build up the relationship and build up the marriage. Build up the marriage and then they have the motivation to work on the marriage. So I will first ask them, um, do you, uh, what do you see are the good things? Tell, uh, tell me or you tell your wife directly. That's what I usually ask them to do. Face each other. Yes. Use you instead of he or she. Tell your wife or husband what is good about him. What has he done well? How has he treated you well? So then the husband and wife will tell each other. Uh, the reason is so that they see that uh, so that each one of them feel appreciated. So a lot of times it's not just a problem of money, it's also a problem of relationship. So I will let them you know, uh, express uh, their appreciation and also, do you want this marriage to be better? Do you want to work on a marriage? They say yes, okay, that's good. Um, are you willing to do something? And then they say yes, and I say, well, that's very good. Okay, and then, so first, these positive things. The good things about husband and wife, uh, uh, whether they want the marriage to be better, they, whether they want to work on it, and then I will ask them, um, okay, each one of you tell me your perspective of this problem, the husband and the wife. And then I will encourage them when they say it, don't accuse. Just say the fact, don't accuse. Uh, and then, when I listen, I very often I found this. The husband's perspective is that the wife is nagging and then complaining about money. But when the wife talks, she would talk about something else. She would say, he doesn't care about me. He doesn't spend time with me. Yeah, and... She and, comes late at night. Right. Come home late. He doesn't love my children. Right. So, all these things will come up. Now, if she says, she, he doesn't love my children, then I will ask her, are these 
the children of both of you also? She says yes. Yeah, then, and then I would suggest her, now how can you describe the children? Then uh, if she can understand, she, she'll say it's our children. She doesn't care for our children. So, and then when they talk about these things, I will listen to them and then I would and then I'll find out from the husband, okay, your perspective. What if she says that it is her children? Say it again. It is her children because she never came there with the children. Oh, you mean, you mean she got married before? She had children before? No, the, the wife said that the children don't belong to her. They are for the husbands in such a case. Uh, what do you mean? You mean the children were not given birth by, by the what, woman? What Deus is trying to say is that a woman will say, when she came to be married here, she never came with the children. But the, the children belongs to husband. Oh, okay, okay. Then, yes, yes. then in that case, then because then they have a previous marriage, then then uh, then I will ask her. Then do you regard them also as your children, even though they were no, they are the same children of the husband. But the woman seems to be disowning them that because the husband does not care about them. Okay. Now it is our own problem now. So she would say his children or my children? His. Okay. She disowns them. Okay. Now this is another issue. This is another issue. Then in that case, I would choose because there can be five different problems right here. I cannot handle all the problems at once. I would choose which problem we want, I want to talk about first. And actually, Children will be secondary. So first I will talk about their relationship. So when she says that, okay, there's some problem with the relationship, then I'll ask the husband, how, from your perspective, how is the relationship? And then if the husband says, well, uh, when I talk to her, she... Uh, Very rude, she answers rudely, she doesn't care. Right, now she doesn't care and she's very rude. And I'll ask the wife again. Okay? He said that. And then what happened? And then she might say, well, when he talks to me, he doesn't care about me, so I become unhappy. So now, I, when I realize the situation, then I will stop them both, calm them, them down, and then say, okay? Now I heard the problem. The wife says that the husband doesn't care so much, and the husband says the wife nags. And then I will explain this. This happened in many marriages. That, because I will explain the man and woman difference. Men usually uh, care about business more, work more, and doesn't pay attention to relationship that much. And women pay attention to relationship and also to needs, pay attention to details in the home more. And so I said, okay, now I realize there is such a problem now, because men usually expect just I want to do work and I don't want to care much, I don't, don't want to listen, don't want to listen. Okay, now, uh, but what does the Bible teach? And then uh, in, Ephesians, in Ephesians it says that husband love your wife and wife submit to your husband. So I said that now, I know it is hard to do it because there is nagging and a nagging came from the lack of love so it's like a circular problem no care nagging nagging less care worse communication it go down more and more so then i asked them okay now i see a problem do you want the marriage to improve do you want to suffer for the rest of your life they say no i'm tired one of them can say, no, I'm tired of this marriage. Okay. Now, if the person says, I'm tired, yes. then I see a, the problem has already gone to a deeper level. And then I ask the person, do you want your life? No, when, when you already you don't care, the marriage is going downhill. And what happened is, in our life, we have different aspects. Our relationship with God, relationship with people, marriage, service, a ministry for, to God, everything. And finance, everything. Now, if one area has problem, 
it will destroy all their areas. Why? When the marriage is broken up, your work might be affected, children affected, your ministry affected, your relationship with God affected. Now, do you want to build this up one by one? So that is a, they have to ex realize, because people don't realize, when a marriage breaks down, it means it breaks up everything in their life. When they understand that, okay, so are we willing to come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins, I'm willing to work on it, and both person works on it. Then, even if it improves, I tell people, 1% a day, there is hope because 1% a day, 100 days is 100%. <laughs> so it will sound easier to them. 1% a day, you just say nice things to the person and the person responds with nice words. That way, the relationship is built up. So are you willing to start working on that? So what I do is, I let them, whenever it comes to a point, I have to ask for wisdom from God how to stop them now, analyze the situation, and do you want your life to go downhill or go up? And then if they say, yes, we want to go up, then there's hope. Then I'll congratulate them. There's hope. There's future. Because when you are willing to work on it, there is hope. But if the person says, no, I don't want to work on it, then I'll say, you think twice. When you make up your mind you don't want to work on it, the result is that your whole life will be broken down. And the whole life of everyone, the husband, the wife and the children, everyone will be affected. Okay? So you understand this, how I let them know the situation. Yes, but now, I have a case here. The wife, she totally refused to make apology to the husband. To apologize. Yes. Now, what happened is that they went to a court to seek a divorce from the court. Okay. Despite all the, they called for meetings to, to try and solve the problem, but she totally refused. Okay. And now they are in the court seeking for divorce. Okay. Now the court has ruled out now that the divorce should be, they should give each other a divorce. Okay. Now, I will say this. The husband has no problem. She says, I know you are, they have three children, two girls and one boy. Okay. Now, the husband says, I have no problem, my wife. You come back, we stay together. And the wife says, no, no, no I cannot come back to you. Okay. How okay. can I marry such a man? Okay. Now, I would answer like this. Even though the husband says, yes, when she comes back, we'll be married again everything will be okay again. It doesn't mean the problem is all the wives. It can still mean because of the relationship problem. So what I want to say aside from this is, so in the church there should be teaching about husband and wife relationship, family relationship, so that they know how to relate to each other. Because sometimes husbands might have a feeling, I'm the teacher, you're the follower. I tell you what to do and you obey. I'm the master, you're the follower. And then that way the relationship is not built up. So, so in this case, the husband, does he find any fault in himself? So I'll ask him, have you found any fault in your relationship with your He has apologized to the wife that my wife, I have no problem. I know we, we, we were in a disagreement together. But now you come back, we stay together okay. and care for our children, but, okay. the, but the wife has no time for that. Okay. Now, it's good to apologize, but it's also a fact that sometimes people apologize, it doesn't mean they change a way of life. So for, for them, if they're willing to sit together, if not, I'll talk to them individually. I would say, okay, this, I will ask the wife. With your husband, what do you think are the problems that you cannot stand anymore? It could be that the husband never listened to me, never spent time with me, never loved me, things like that. And if I realize the problem, and I'll ask the wife, if I can help your husband to change, are you willing to give your husband a chance? Now, if 
I can, you know, I find out more and listen to the wife and empathize with her. I know it's hard, I know it's difficult, and then um, I know it has hurt your heart, he has hurt your heart. And, and I also realize that this will hurt your, you too, because in the future when you're divorced, it will hurt you too. So are you willing to give it a chance or not? So I would listen to the wife. I would never accuse one side and say it's your fault. I would always find out what caused her to behave like that. She is just that she don't want to be submissive to the husband. Okay. She wants to be free so that she can manage her life. Okay. Now, if in a case when she really what doesn't want to do anything, I can tell you that nobody can do anything. Counseling cannot change a stubborn, very stubborn person. In fact, she is very stubborn. Okay. That's yeah. why the, although the father, the, the parents from the father came, and also her parents came, they sat together, but she totally refused. They tried to counsel them to come back together, she refused. Okay. Now, that is one perspective, maybe from the husband, say that she is very stubborn. But then, there is also a possibility that the husband is not willing to love her. So we have to find out more from each person. I found that when I do counseling, I never want to just listen to one side. I always listen to both sides. And then when I find out more from the wife, then I will ask God, how can I help her to face the problem and maybe turn, turn back. But if she is very stubborn and if she has made up her mind, then nobody can change her. Counseling cannot change very stubborn people. So in such a case, what are you supposed to do as a counselor? In this such a case, I will Where still... one person is stubborn. I will still talk to the wife. I will still listen. She totally refuses that. She doesn't want to be submissive to anybody. She wants okay. to hold her life free. Okay. Now, there is one side. There is but possibility... But two way, it might be the husband or the wife. It, it's probably both sides. Yes. So that's why I listen to the wife. Then that's why we need counseling. Counseling, what does it do? If a person is at this level, you want the person to go to this level, I cannot just tell her to change. I have to guide her step by step. First, find out why she's, you know, she has made a decision. Find out why. And then, and then let her know that her decision can affect herself too, not just affect the husband. And do you want this to continue? And if the husband changed, do you want to give him a chance? If everything tried, I try everything, and still she doesn't want to change, then there is nothing we can do. We can still try to talk to her again. So as a counselor, you give up? Give up at that time. Because there are some cases nobody can change anyone. For instance, I use an example. You try to bring someone to Jesus. You tell her, him or her, how good Jesus is. And I pray for you, experience God. Do you want to believe in Jesus? No, I don't want to believe in Jesus. And you try to let her know, okay, uh, God is so good, so wonderful, you have experienced that, so do you want God to come into your life? And she still doesn't want to believe. Finally, at this point, you have to say, I cannot do anything to help her, to believe in Jesus. So at that point, I can say, at this point I give up. But later, there might be a second chance. So what I'm saying is, uh, for this wife, maybe when we listen to her and respond to her needs, one day, maybe she changes. Or maybe now, because the husband has not listened to her at all and she doesn't see a hope in a marriage. If she's totally selfish, then nobody can do anything. It's true in counseling. Counseling is not 100 effective. Now even God's work is not 100% effective. Why do I say that? God wants to change many people, but only some of them believe. God wants to change them. And when we speak the word, the Holy Spirit will work through our word to change these people's heart, but many people don't change. So. Even God, when He tried to change people, not everyone responds. So we, we cannot say that counseling is 100% effective. 
So there are some times, sometimes the councillor may give up with the situation if people are not willing to change. Yeah, when people totally do not want to change. But if there is still a chance, then there is a possibility. For instance, I've counseled couples that the husband has affairs. And when I talk to them, they still say, it's okay, I'll try to change. I'll, you know, can you give up that second woman? He says, yes. says yes, but then turn around and doesn't give up and doesn't want to see me anymore. Then I cannot do anything anymore. So it, we counseling or helping anyone spiritually can never be 100% guaranteed to work. Okay, but we, but I never just believe one person, and when I talk to the other person, I will never, I will not quote the other person's words. I will just ask this person. So, for instance, the husband complains about a wife. I will not tell the wife what the husband says. If I tell the wife what the husband says, the wife will get very angry. She will say, "You're helping your husband, uh, my husband. You're helping him." and you come to me to try to change me. I will not do that. I will listen to the wife. What do you see is a situation in your marriage? And do you, uh, is there anything I can help? What do you see the needs? And to let her know that I respect her, I listen to her, I want to help both of them. So when I do counseling, both persons will feel being respected and listened to and cared for. That's very important. We don't say anything, why did you do that? I don't say that. I don't say, why did you do that? I would say, okay, uh, in that situation, what did you do? And then you did that. And then I would say, okay, now have you thought of the result when you did that? So how would it affect the other person? Instead of using strong language, I would never accuse the person. Okay. Now, which is the best way you are counseling couples? Are you supposed to bring them together or you can talk to them separately? When the, the couples, best way. The couples, when the couples still have, you know, if they still can talk about the problem, then I, I will put them together. If they already are in a very sensitive condition, if one person talks, the other person starts to yell, then I will say, please, I will talk to you separately. Uh, it depends on each condition. It's different for each condition. But which is the best way now? There is no best way. When it depends on the situation. When they can talk to each other, when they can still be friendly, then I'll talk to them together. When they cannot be friendly anymore, then I have to talk to them separately. And after I talk to them individually, I will ask them, okay, when we come together, now you see there's a hope in a marriage, and you want to change something. So when we come together, can you be gentle and polite? And I would be the one who is helping you both to communicate in a gentle way. In most cases, couples just communicate in very rough manners. Now, they talk to people gently outside the family. Outside. <laughs> but when they talk to the, to the spouse, they refuse to be polite. And in my preaching, I will say this. When we talk to the people on the outside, when we talk to people in the church, we are always, generally, always gentle. Because we know that that's the only way we can bless the other person and have communication. Now, the husband and wife are the most important person in our life. Is it true? I would, in my teaching, my preaching, I would say, it's, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Now, why has it changed? Now, in the courting, uh, uh, courting situation, usually the husband chase after the woman and then be very loving and kind and do all kinds of things. How has it changed? Generally, it's like this. When they were chasing after each other, then they are willing to say good words and be nice. But after marriage, as I said, they start to have the law and the expectation of husband and wife. What do, you mean, what do I mean the law? The husband will say, you have to wash the dishes, you have to do this, do that, and give commands. Yeah, and you did not do it. And then the wife, I would say to the husband, you don't listen to me. So it's requirements. Requirements doesn't build up the relationship. As with our relationship with God also. As a pastor, I don't say to the people, 
Did you pray? You have to pray. If not, God will not, not listen to you. I won't say it like this. I will say it with grace. God loves you. God cares about you. God has all kinds of blessings He wants to give you. So I would encourage people with God's grace. When you pray to God, God is very happy. And God will start to bless you. So grace motivates people to love God. Now for marriage, when they are courting, they will, they will have love. They will say, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I'm excited to see you. I'm happy to see you smile. But because I have to say this as a fact, many men chase after women as a job. As a job. They want to accomplish something in their life. They already have a very good job, I have money, now I want a woman. So if I want a woman, what do I do? I try to say nice things, I want to be nice to the person, I want to be kind to the person, to bring the person to Jesus, I mean not to Jesus, to bring the person to love me. So he chased after her. And the moment the woman says, yes, okay, we can be boyfriends and girlfriends and uh, and one day I'll promise to marry you. Then they begin to give law to each other. And very often, actually in a marriage, uh, in a courting dating situation already, what happened is, uh, the, the, the girl was, would start to say requirements. Why didn't you call me yesterday? Where were you yesterday? Why did you disappear? <laughs> And then when she, because she wants the, husband, the, the boyfriend to be nice to her, that's natural. But she say it in a way of the law. Why didn't you see me? Instead she can, supposed to say? she can say like this, I'm happy to see you today. I like to see you every day. Every time you come to me, I'm very happy. Really she never came yesterday. But still, using grace is better to use the law. Why didn't you come yesterday? The man will get angry. But if she says, today you came to me, I'm very happy. Then the man is motivated. Every time when he comes to the woman, there is satisfaction. Now that is what my wife does to me all the time. Whenever I do anything, she'll say, I'm happy for the whole day because you asked me to date tonight. Tonight we'll go out for a walk and she's very happy. She's always expressing appreciation She's always very happy. But if she starts to say, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Then it will make me, give me pressure. And people don't understand it. So that's why in my teaching, you notice I talk about words of grace and words of the law. We still need the words of the law, but we want to talk about the law in a way to guide the person, to explore how to, we can do better. For instance, in a dating situation, the woman can say this, I really like to see you, I'm happy to see you every time and uh, I like listening to you and I would like to hear more about you and then the man uh, didn't say anything and then the woman can say, well, you know, I care about you, I love you, I like to know your worries, I like to know what you're happy about and, and then because Many uh, women behave in a way that the, that the man doesn't like. Because sometimes it's like this. The man says, okay, I have a, a something to do and it's difficult. And then the wife and the woman will say, ah, I worry about you. Oh, uh, it's too much worry and too much nagging. You have to do this, do that, and then the problem is solved. Because men and women haven't learned to communicate. So I believe that in a church we need to teach people how to communicate with grace so if the man always communicate with like I'm happy to see you I'm I'm fortunate to have you is blessed to have you and what you've done to me makes me very happy uh, and uh, I like you when you talk gently to me I'm very happy so always say words of grace and then when there is any problem he would say uh, I like to have uh, uh, gentle, peaceful communication. Uh, can we um, talk peacefully about this? And then if both sides is like this, then the man will not be 
will not get sick of the woman. Very often, it's like this. Both sides make the other person feel sick. The man doesn't care about the woman, and then doesn't, doesn't listen to her. And then the woman is a two-way traffic. Two-way. And the woman nags and gets angry and frustrated. Both of this behavior make the relationship worse. That's why after marriage, usually in a few months' time, the marriage starts to deteriorate. But if people learn to say kind words, I love you, I care about you, what you've done to me is wonderful, I appreciate every time what you've done to me is wonderful, and I, I like that, I enjoy that, I enjoy to be with you, I want to spend time with you. So if the husband always talks like that, and then the wife say, I'm so happy you spend time with me, I appreciate you, I like you, and when you spend time with me, I'm very happy. That way, they're both saying positive words. And then if they have a need, a problem, they will say, how can we solve this problem? How can we talk about this better? And also, I have to say this, sometimes the culture put limitation. So I heard that in your culture, some families, the wife never sit together with the husband. Especially when eating. When, as while eating. While eating, yeah. Women should sit on the other side and right. men on the Right. So what happened is then, for the whole day they've been busy. They don't have time to talk. Eating is not just a time of eating. Eating is a time of communication. So when eating, if they sit together, they can talk and then talk about things in a leisure way. And that way, it builds up relationship. So I, I think that as Christians, I would motivate you and other Africans to try to change this culture that the wife was eat together with the husband and the children together, that there is more communication. There is more love, more care. And then the wife would want to dedicate her best to the husband if she's loved. And the Basically, it's like this, loving more and guiding the other person how we can do things better. Yes? There is a question here okay. that you find in a marriage, this newly married couple, that uh, uh, because they have been under courtship and now they have been united together as a husband and a wife, mm -hmm. and now it comes that now the husband is not in a position to satisfy, to satisfy the needs of a woman sexually, that his libido is low. What can we, and now this matter has been brought before you, how do you advise that? Okay, now, when I hear that, I will listen to both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, if, is it just a matter of sex, or is it also a matter of care and love and communication? So, I think that very often it's both sides. And also, now if, if um, the man said, yes, my uh, sexual desire is not as strong, or my sexual ability is not as strong, then I would tell them, sex is not just a sexual act. Sex can be in hugging, kissing, touching, saying nice words. Because if the husband does that, the wife is also satisfied. So I'm, I'm saying, it's any problem is it's not just one person's problem, and it's always two person's problem. And also, the problem is not just one-sided. It's not just one thing. It can involve other areas. And, and now, because of that, the, the, the woman says that he, she's now pulling out of this relationship. She's going. She okay. don't want to stay with the husband who cannot satisfy her sexuality. Okay. Now, when it comes to that point, first I will still counsel and find out. I will talk to both of them and ask them, do you still want the marriage to work? If the husband is willing to spend more time with you, be nice to you, talk with you, be kind to you, listen to you, and to satisfy you sexually, not necessarily in the sexual act, maybe in touching and hugging and this body contact, now, would that be uh, satisfactory to you, or does it have to be a sexual act? It has to be a sexual act. Yeah. Now, 
I would uh, say one of them is yeah. unable to satisfy them. Right. The and I believe that it's now first the concept, husband and wife both trying to satisfy each other for the reason that Paul said, our body doesn't belong to ourselves, belong to the spouse, the first. And the second is that Paul said, love your wife, submit to your husband. So when people love and submit, then the marriage, you know, there's a better chance that the marriage can work out. And also many things, there is communication, negotiate. Mm -hmm.